Okay. Um, Mr. Pierce. Mr. Hayden. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A subsection 18 and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the North Reading Community Planning Commission is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can ad adequately access the proceeding proceedings as provided for in the order. A reminder that persons who would like to listen to this meeting while in progress may do so by calling in 1-301-715-8592 and the meeting code is 98-543-00926. Thank you, Mr. Hayden. This meeting is in, is, um, <clears throat> has begun. This meeting is being recorded uh, for all those who are listening. Um, and let's see, do we have, we don't have any time certain here tonight. Uh, we haven't. Is it eight o'clock, is uh, Lowell Road eight o'clock, Danielle? Um, yes, that'll just be a vote to continue. Um, I was going to suggest that we start with um, the zoning discussion for Concord Street because I, I think there are several people here tonight um, for the purpose of hearing. Okay, the, the 412 and 14 Concord Street. Um, yes. Mr. Coviello, I see you are here. Are you uh, wanting to make a presentation or do you have somebody else that is? Jill, you're you're muted. Muted. Yep, I'm muted. Very unusual. Good evening, Jill Mann here on behalf of Sergio Coviello. Um, we had, Sergio and I had been speaking to Ms. McKnight about um, Mr. Coviello's desire to rezone the property that he has, which is located on Concord um, Street. If you want, I can actually share a map. Is, can I do that, Danielle? Or? Yes, you can share your screen. If you have trouble, just let me know. Nope. Okay. So, um, are you able to see my screen now? Yep. Yep. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. So, um, I just wanted to give you here's a picture of um, Mr. Coviello's property. It's basically um, located right before the junction with Park Street. And he, he has presently either owns or is under control 16 acres. Um, this is where the turkey farm was. Um, and that's lot one, lot two, lot three. Um, at the present time, lot three, you know, still has some barns on it. I think that the town is absolutely familiar with this property. This is one where there was a right of first refusal because it had um, received the tax lien under, I think it was chapter 61. It was agriculture, so 61A. Um, and the town actually did not get a supporting vote at town meeting to buy it. So uh, as we sit, it's now commercially, um, I mean, I shouldn't say commercial, el it's, it's eligible for uses other than agriculture at this point. Um, and what Mr. Coviel would like to do is to actually rezone the property. And I'll show you. So here's, I'm gonna make it a little smaller so you can see it. So Mr. Coviello's property, you can see my pointer, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So here are the three properties. And as you can see, this is the tan area is actually RA. And then the adjacent area, the brown area is IO. Um, the intention would be to take the property and actually develop it for the industrial office use. Um, his, his, his point would be to bring his business here. He's um, been doing very well. His business is growing and he needs more space. Um, I, I believe everybody knows he's located in town. He lives in town and he would just like to come to this property and to develop it for other than residential purposes. Um, I mean, this particular property, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, he has no desire really to build it out for residential use, but that's the only uh, proposal that would exist presently, unless of course, there's something um, in the works or the town votes to approve the change in use to IO. 
Um, we thought it was a good change, one, because he's adjacent to the IO district, um, two, because you know, it is, he's already on Concord Street, which is, is um, not an insubstantial street. Um, the property was used commercially. I mean, it was clearly a farm, but it was also a retail component that was used up front. And the property is separated by its closest to butter um, by, believe it or not, this is a street. It's an old street. Um, there's no intention of developing it, but it is an old street on um, you know, the historic maps. You could see it on the old plan. Um, but presently, the desire would be simply to develop this particular property for an industrial purpose. So before we actually you know, went around and, and sent around the petition, we wanted to come to this board and just go through it. We even notified some of the abutters. I mean, I saw that there, um, Ms. McKnight had received you know, a letter about it, um, which I was actually surprised because th that was one of the abutters that Mr. Um, Kobiel specifically spoke to and they had no issue with the uh, rezoning, but I, I saw in their letter that they um, didn't really maybe favor it and they were across the street. Um, we are proposing to submit to the selectmen you know, a citizen's petition for the upcoming meeting. Um, I can show you that too. I mean, it's just a, it's a simple standard. Uh, oh. I mean, we'll, we'll submit it and, and here's the description. So basically it's 14 Concord Street, 12 Concord Street and four Concord Street. And we just, the requirement is to just describe the areas specifically. So we did that on the plan. We have yet to have it submitted and, and signed by anyone because we didn't wanna do that before we came to you to chat about it. Um, I don't know if you have any questions, um, but that's what we're here for. Okay, thank you, Joe. Thank you. Um, um, so does anybody from the, any members of the board have any uh, particular questions about this, what they think about this? Yeah, Warren, this is Dave. Um, I just have a question, Jill. What, where did they intend to exit out of that, um, out of the property? Would it be on to Concord uh, further down, you know, in the, in the industrial zone or up closer? you know, where the uh, other property is kind of where the farm was, you know, where you would go in to the, to get eggs or whatever. Is that, is that <laughs> where they would exit? No, I mean, the intention is truly to access it over the opening here. Now, as you know, though, RA requires 160 feet of frontage. So um, these, uh, I think this might be a little smaller than 160, it's just grandfathered, um, but the properties require 160 a frontage and then the IO requires 200. There is more than the 520 square feet of frontage. So, you know, we have the right to access, even if we were to continue to use these as residential for the time being, um, there is always going to be sufficient frontage for all of them. And this would be the area closer to where the I IO district is, is where we, where we would enter. <clears throat> okay, great, thanks. Of course, you're very welcome. Which one's Bobcat? Is Bobcat uh, just a little further, one one more lot down? Yeah, I don't think it's this one, isn't it? This one? I think that's probably it right there. I can look if I blow it up a bit. Hey, no, nope, nope, it is right next door. Is okay, right it there. is this one right here. No. Yeah, yeah, because we, had, we actually notified them too, their star cat on the abutter list. So what I had done was I sent letters to all of those um, individuals who abut the project because I didn't... I, I prefer them to know, okay, look, we're doing this because he's he's gone out and tried to speak to everyone, but I did want them to have a, a written notification. I did. So we sent it in Cat Star, I think is their name. Um, they got notice. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Um, anybody else? Like if you want to we'll stop your screen share there so I can see if somebody else comes on. Most certainly, let me see. There we go. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll take questions from almost anybody right now, if the, if you like, even from the public, just to just to uh, get a couple of ideas out there, if that's okay. Um, yes. I have a question. Well, if somebody would like to hear it, a few questions. Sure. Um, this is the Welch family. We're at 13 Concord Street, and we're directly across the street yep. from 4, 12, and suffer the consequences of 14, unfortunately. Um, so my question is, is there going to be, I know this probably isn't um, the, the venue for it, but Concord Street itself is a disaster. Um, it's long, long been ignored by the town as far as repair 
and safety. And the entryway to 14 is about a 75 foot um, area. And it is on a hill and a curve. So is there anything going to be done if that's going to be the if that's going to be the entrance and the egress? Is there anything going to be done as far as traffic studies to make that safe? Well, right now we don't have a, a, any a request before us for that. Um, so uh, we can't really comment on that because there's going to there'll be a plan of some kind that'll be submitted, and that plan will answer a lot of those questions. We don't have that right now. Um, primarily, what I'm looking for is what your concerns are so that uh, Mr. Coviello can, can have an opportunity to address them. So my understanding is traffic is the, one of the concerns that you have right there and how people are going to enter and exit. Right. So that will be, it will, that would be addressed on a, on, a, on any, if he was to bring a plan forward, but he's still got to get through town meeting. And if town meeting approves it, then a, then a plan will be, uh, be provided. And you'll have another, you'll have plenty of opportunity to comment on the design at that point. But your concern is noted. That's the important part. Uh, second question, um, and my mom has a question too. Is it just going to be one building on the property or is it going to be similar to his other property down the street? Because that's- um, a, we that's don't, a Again, we don't have uh, any design yet. Um, uh, and I think that he's gonna, that's something that he'll bring before, have to bring before us. Those questions will be answered. Uh, once he finds out what's, what he's able to do with the property. I think he's what we're looking for now. And, and I am glad that he does this because it gives you and other people a chance to ask some questions and to say some things that he can take into account when he does this, any, any design that he does there, if he gets the vote that he needs. So yes, you have one more question? Yes, I do. Camille Welch, 13 Congress Street. What exactly is industrial office? What kind of businesses would go in? Uh, kind of the ones uh, that you see that are up there now. It's uh, um, office type uses, and uh, which I think is a, what his kind of use would be an office kind of use for his uh, for his business. Um, so maybe, and, light, maybe. And, and light industrial, not heavy industrial, but light industrial. So does that mean no trucks coming in? Because we well, need gonna be, there's going to be just just like all of the other. Uh, um, just like all of the other businesses that are up and down that street, there is some, they require trucks to move stuff in and out, but it's not going to be a truck. I understand that, but I mean, of, having of, trucks parked across the street from our family home that we've been in 61 years is very, very sad for us. Okay. And I just want to be sure they're not just going to put another business there that is like the rest of the street. Is like the rest of the yeah. street. Because uh, the town isn't giving the residents on Conquer Street any information and no attention when they do call to ask for changes. Well, here, here's an opportunity. Here's yeah. your opportunity to have something to say and to, and to put your, your concerns out. Yeah. But um, again, I one... Was told, Go ahead. I was told by the police department that they couldn't put a light in for safety here because other come other uh, residents would think we're their playing favorites, which I think is a sick reply to my request to get lighting. That's just one of the issues. Yeah. Concord Street okay. has been very neglected by the town, and um, this hurts a lot for yeah. for for not just the residents here, but the entire West End. Because well, hopefully, hopefully, when a lot of times when a, when a, when a new development is done, we get we get some offsite, we get some improvements on the roadways. When Milton Cat came in up the street, they improved the roadway, they fixed a bunch of things on by their by their facility. So, so that is something that we're, that historically has been done. So, has anybody else got any questions or comments? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, okay. I am Brett Maloney. Uh, I'm trustee of 408 Park Street, which is uh, diagonally across the street from the turkey farm. Uh, I'm not familiar with Mr. Carviello and his business. What type of business is he planning on moving there? Um, he has an electrical business. Okay, so it's not, is it going to end up, is it going to end up being industrial condos in that or is, is he just looking to build one building? Well, we don't really have a plan yet and I would not want to uh, uh, add, we really don't have a plan in front of us because what he does is going to be determined by how a town meeting vote goes. We can't predict that. 
So um, after that, a some kind of a plan would be submitted, assuming you got a vote that would be submitted. Well, no matter what happens, any development that happens, they will be submitted to the board and everyone will have a chance to look at it and comment on it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, is there any other general questions? Um, um, Sergio, you anything you'd like to say? Is there any other? I'm trying to get you a little input there on what the concerns of the people are. <coughs> Please unmute yourself first. Warren? Yes. Can I just ask Diane Welch's mother's first name? What was it? No, she's muted. It's Camille. Camille, thank you. Okay. Sergio, unmute yourself. I did. Okay. All right. Anybody can hear me? Yes, yes. All, you're all set. Okay. I, I bought the property to move my business, uh, a building, put a commercial building there. Obviously, I cannot do it on residential, uh, but I spoke to uh, a bunch of neighbors there to discuss what my plan was. And I think they all knew. And I think uh, the uh, selectmen and uh, you guys know uh, what my plan was when, when we went to town meeting um, and I ended up with the property. So I don't, I, there's no secrets here. I'm not holding any secrets. I think uh, uh, I'm a straight shooter and I, and I told you it's, it's all my business. Uh, I, I need a bigger building that I have down the street. Uh, and that's basically what what I'm what I have. Okay. So, uh, any other comments on this? Um, this is just an informational hearing, from what I understand, Danielle. This is all we're doing is informational. Just informal. Um, if you know, once the citizens' petition is submitted at that time, we'll schedule and um, you know advertise for sure. our public hearing. Sure. Can well, I, I wanted to give everybody a chance to, to speak and Sergio a chance to comment, so. Hey, Warren, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my, my, my name is Paul De Niro. I'm adjacent to, uh, to the Cove Yellow property on the east side on 402 Park Street. Yes. And I just sent the text, I don't know if I did it right or not, but I wanted to say that I have not received any 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 notice from um, from anyone on, on the subject, and I want I want to please be included in any future um, notices sent out. And what where, where are you? I am adjacent. My my property is a horse farm uh, um, that borders the the Cove Yellow property. Oh, Mr. Gennaro, right? Yeah, four hundred two Park Street. Oh, I sent it. No, we didn't we receive didn't get it. it. Very odd. Yeah, because every uh, my you're on there. Okay, well, uh, send me a test one or something. Yes, that's <laughs> odd. Yeah, 402 Park Street. Uh, yeah. Okay. And, and, I and, I also, sure and I also mentioned here, this is not a vote yet, but, but I have no objection to having the uh, Cove Yellow property uh, zone commercially. I, I think it would be a good thing, so. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. But I'll make sure I have you down so that we get you next time because we did do 402 park that's strange watch okay. you'll get it in two days that happens too yeah oh, okay jill is there any any closing comments anything else you wanted to get out of this meeting no or we just we, we, sim we simply okay. wanted to you know make the public aware and we wanted to uh, allow the cpc to know that it was coming and um sergio and i will be circulating that citizens petition we'll have it signed mm -hmm. and soon we will be before you um formally okay rich did you have a comment uh yes okay. Uh, Brett Maloney, uh, for a okay, Park Street right. trustee. Uh, I just got one more question for you folks. If that zoning is allowed, would that allow uh, then the zoning to creep further down Conga Street and further up Park Street? No. So the, the rezoning is strictly, I think he's looking strictly to zone the, the land that he owns, yes. nobody else's land. Um, and it would be an extension of an existing IO district, I think so. Well, my question is, if if he's granted that extension for the I.O. district, yep. can Freddie Shaw next door, can the horse farm next door uh, sell their property and, and change that to an I.O. district? The um, If they go before town meeting and can, can make their case and get town meeting to vote for it, um, I would imagine that's so. I mean, each person that owns property has some in, inalienable rights, you know, just like you do for the property you control. Oh, so, I understand. Uh, I just want to know if that was a possibility. Uh, well, anything's possible, but 
at some point, um, at some point, the neighborhood's not going to want it to go any further, perhaps. But you do know that 62 going down through the center of town is all a business, is local business and general business district. So it's not, it's not as if Park Street is all residential from that point on. It's, it's not. So there's already uh, businesses that run all down through the center of town because of the districts, the, the, the different general business and local business districts there. So, okay, if there are no other comments, I'm going to thank you, Sergio, for coming and Jill. And, thank you. Uh, hopefully you got the questions answered that you were looking for, at least your head start. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay. See you soon. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank and, and thank you for everybody that came and commented. You know, your comments do end up in our uh, minutes of our meeting, so they're not ignored and they will be brought back when the, uh, to, to these people if they do file for anything. So thank you. Take care. Good night. Yep. Yep. Okay, um, let me see here. I'm going to keep both of these going here. So. You got three minutes to your uh, public hearing, uh, Walt uh, Warren. Okay, well, we got some. Do you want to do some minutes, Chris or, or Ryan? Do you have a. Yes. Um... I move to accept the minutes dated January 5th, 2021. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Any changes? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Let the record show. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, uh, four people in, in, um, in favor, no opposed. Uh, uh, Ryan, if you would, please. Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the minutes dated January 19th, 2021. Second. Okay, I have a motion to second. Is there any changes or corrections? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Mr. Eckert, show four in favor, no opposed. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the minutes dated February 2nd, 2021. Second. Second. <laughs> Third. <laughs> Okay, I have a motion and a second. And uh, any uh, changes or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The record show four in favor, no opposed. Uh, last, Mr. Chairman, move to accept the minutes dated February 9th, 2021. Okay. Second. Motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? The changes are discussion. Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Make it so four in favor, no opposed. Okay, we could do that, Mallard Land. That's just a bond reduction, right? Right. Okay. And it's it's ready to go. You you do have a motion. Okay. If you want to do the motion, if you would, Ryan, for the Mallard Land bond reduction, please. Yes, I move the community planning commission vote to accept the January fourth, two thousand twenty one report from Design Consultants Inc. for the Mallard Land subdivision that the balance of $57,169.20 be released. Okay, I have a motion, do I have a second? I second that. Okay, Dave seconded it. Okay, uh, any discussion, any questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The record show four in favor, uh, no opposed. And we have a, a second motion there as well, Mr. Chairman. Move that the Community Planning Commission vote to release the site opening bond in the amount of $5,000 for the Mallard Lane subdivision. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Is there any questions or any concerns? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Let the record show four in favor, no opposed. Okay, it being 8 p.m. We'll go to uh, 104 Lowell Street. Um, okay, though, so now our, our, tonight we're just going to continue this. Is that true, Danielle? Yes, uh, they've submitted a request to continue the hearing till um, March 16th, which will be our next meeting following the next CBA meeting. And People to continue it as well. That's one of the reasons we're continuing. 
So they I have no decision from them yet. Yes. I move that the Community Planning Commission vote to grant the requested continuance for the public hearing for 104 Low Road, Martin's Landing, till Tuesday, March 16th, 2021 at 8 p.m. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Is there any uh, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Let the, let the record show four in favor, no opposed. Thank you. Okay. Perhaps I see, um, perhaps Abacus, we should take a look at that now, next. Um, I see David is here on the call. I saw David um, here, yep. And my partner should be here from his home, but we're not gonna, we don't have to wait for him. He should be here oh, he's any here. second now. Oh, okay. I'm just letting him in. No, knocking on the door. Okay. Hey, um, so should I start off? Yeah, Dave, I think, um, you know, my, our notes here say that you've, uh, that you've uh, talked to a few, um, a couple of people about the, uh, about feasibility and that kind of thing and see if you had a little input on that. And then uh, um, the, um, we have a, a from the town center. I didn't I'll open that all the way up. That didn't open for me quickly. So um, it was that a that was an additional proposal for our, our, our additional plan. It's a copy Why of his presentation. Us, pardon? Uh, it's a copy of his presentation for tonight. Oh, okay. So Why don't you go we, ahead then, Dave. Yeah. So what we wanted to do, what this presentation does is it's a kind of, you could call it a draft of a presentation that we recommend and probably we're the ones to present it to landowners, to other stakeholders, to boards and committees, to the public, to the select board, um, to sort of tell them what we've been doing and what our recommendations are. So the first half of this sums up essentially what you already know. So I thought I would go through that pretty quickly. And then the second half talks about what we have found out in the past six weeks or so talking to a whole series of development professionals. So okay, I think if, if that's okay, I will run through, um, I'll run through this. Um, let's see, here we go. And can you see my cursor here? Yes. Yep. Okay. Can you do Can you do full screen, Dave? Um, I thought it was full screen. Well, it is, but we got all we got your extra stuff on the sides. I don't know. Maybe that's as big as they get. On my screen, it's full screen, except the little faces on the on on the side. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's okay, Dave. Go ahead. That's all right. Go ahead. Hit hit the okay. little hit the little dot in the middle of the column on the right to to make all those menus go away. There's a little black arrow to make that push to the right. Yeah. Um, down, come down. Bring you're halfway down. up the screen, halfway up the screen. No, not that one. That, oh, to you, <laughs> too far. <laughs> like the, like the help, there we go. That's there better. we go. I'll figure it out. Give me, give me, give me a minute That's all right. or two. Okay. That's all right. So if this is where we're here. at. Um, so, um, Maine in winter, uh, we were brought on board because the town perceived that this site had great opportunities to provide the kind of town center that it doesn't really have and is looking for. Um, and there are a lot of uh, great things about this, uh, about this area. You know, it's on a prominent thoroughfare that really can support new uses like retail. It's accessible to major highways and retail. So it's the kind of area where people might want to live uh, surrounding by existing neighborhoods. So it is a kind of center, uh, even though it doesn't look and feel like one. Uh, look, a lot of uh, um, kind of vitality in the area. The corner of uh, winter in Maine is very public. It's very open. It's the kind of space that would be appropriate with a fair amount of work for public open space and buildings. It's adjacent to Martins Brook, 
which is a potential recreation area. And it's a pretty large developable parcel whose highest and best use we don't think is being realized. And of course, it's private landowners, they can speak to that, but that's certainly many people's perceptions. There are a lot of, um, and you know, there are a series of different uses uh, many of which have seen better days. Again, these are owned by uh, private entities. They can judge for themselves. At one time, this was in the middle of nowhere. It was on the periphery. This is now the kind of center of town. And, you know, I'm not going into a lot of detail because I think everybody's familiar. If we, if this were in a public setting, I might go into a more detailed explanation as the background. So I was going to go through quickly because I, th I think this is pretty familiar. There are a lot of challenges as well. There's high speed traffic and it's not a particularly pedestrian friendly area. There's no sewer service and that really hinders development. It's owned by seven different entities, which doesn't make it easy to facilitate a kind of comprehensive plan and push it forward. Uh, there's no public transportation available. And for a town center, that's highly advisable. As you saw in the last picture, it's divided up and it's paved over. It could be a real place, but it doesn't feel like one. In Martin's Brook, it's behind an eight foot chain link fence. So you can't really appreciate the natural character uh, that many people might enjoy. Uh, so it, what we did is we looked at these challenges and opportunities. Wetlands and flooding are certainly an issue, but there's a fair amount of developable land that follows the perimeter of the area that's already been paved and built out that could support new uses. Um, and although there are different property owners, there are most of the land is owned by one property owner. So you wouldn't necessarily need to get buy-in from all of the landowners in order to follow through on a vision for a town center. So what we've been doing uh, as consultants of the town is we examine the feasibility of a packaged sewage treatment plant we looked at previous market and planning studies by the MAPC and others. We developed a series of conceptual planning options. We resolved a kind of optimal plan for additional, for initial development assess assessment. So that's all work you see, the people uh, uh, on the CPC. We reached out to possible developers with the conceptual vision, and I'm gonna report on that shortly. We, this is we reached out to landowners with conceptual vision. That's anticipating that this presentation is being done, let's say a month from now for the Board of Selectmen of the public. And we prepared recommendations for implementation of this vision for a town center at Winter and Main Street. Um, so we hired an engineering firm who looked at a packaged sewage treatment plant about three million bucks. And that's not insignificant, but it's not a showstopper. It takes about this area, it takes the, uh, the kind of most of the Ocean State job lot parking lot, um, for, but for the infiltration area, the soil support that. And it's not such a vast area that it couldn't be accommodated within, you know, most any, you know, large scale master plan. So, before we put together a vision for the town and for the future, we looked at what other cities and towns have done, um, you know, comparable towns to really bring vitality to their neighborhoods, to bring people together. And here are some of the images that seem like, you know, kind of a model for what Maine and Winter could be in order to provide North Reading with what we think the town needs and wants. Then we came up with a series of different options for how to follow through on that. A lot of different ways of weaving public green space, public paved space, retail, residential, community center, uh, natural areas together uh, in a way that supports a sense of community that's fun and that's interesting. From there, we zeroed in on what at least at a very preliminary um, level seemed like the optimal plan. 
that calls, and you, and you can see my cursor moving. Um, yes. Uh, two new streets that um, connect Main Street to Winter Street and break it down into manageable blocks. Um, the most prominent corner has open paved and green space for a variety of activities, a pedestrian walkway that leads to a community building backing up to Martins Brook, buildings with retail on the ground floor, residential up above, it faced the street, it faced the corner with the parking lots tucked in behind so that they're accessible, but not in your face. This prioritizes storefronts, retail, commercial, green space, pedestrians while accommodating parking. And here's a few, uh, mostly three-story buildings, some townhouses in back, one-story commercial in front, which I think everyone felt was a kind of good way to go. And certainly questions came up, is this enough development? Uh, is it too much paved over green space? Will there be the number of uh, apartments that will drive this? And, you know, just a few pictures. There are only two people here, but the, the you know, the intersection, green space, food trucks, seasonal market celebrations, playground areas, uh, the, a new street lined with retail. Um, a nice pedestrian street that's very accessible to Main Street, but quiet, peaceful, a place to shop, a place to live with residential above retail. Um, this is that commercial street, parallel parking, retail, retail, a little downtown with housing up above like a lot of downtowns. And in back, maybe lower level, uh, you know, one story community center, um, townhouses lined with trees. So that's where we were last time we talked. And since then we have reached out to a whole series of development professionals. And one of them was George Cole. And we went into more detail. You know, he, we talked when this was all theory, when this was a laid out reality and we heard the same things over and over. There was not much diversity of opinion and it doesn't stray that far from what we heard from George Cole, but um, you know, with a kind of plan in place, uh, development professionals could react to that. And this includes the MAPC. They're not developers. They advocate for the public, the development of the public realm. So whether it's the for-profit sector or the nonprofit sector, we're hearing the same kinds of things. There's a really high demand for housing, and that drives virtually everything when it comes to using the private sector for development. Because the background, as we know, for all of this is that the town is looking for public benefits, but they see the private sector as the driver. So the public sector wants to piggyback on private development developers. Um, there's a high demand for housing. That's where the money's gonna come from. Everybody wants retail and commercial. There's not much demand. And even if there's demand, it's hard for it to, to get it to pay for itself. So a lot of developers are saying, we'll do retail, we'll do commercial, but it's a break even. You know, the more you have of that, the less housing, the less viable the development is. So in the current market, and we're doing a similar project in Hopkinton, in this different town, different conditions, but the numbers kind of check. Um, 40 to $50,000 in value for the landowners per unit of housing to, to develop. Uh, to develop. So if you did 200 units of housing, and let's say it's 50,000, you, you know, the prices key value keeps on going up, uh, that's 10 million bucks. So an interesting fact is that the assessed values of all of these properties in their current conditions is 10 million bucks. So some of them may underperform in relationship to their assessed value, but the $10 million suggests a hurdle that 200 units, 220 or 30 units doesn't really get you over. Um, we're hearing over and over three-story development will not provide return of investment in this context. Um, 
a lot of work to be done in this property. It's not greenfield uh, property uh, where everyone gets a generous backyard. Um, construction costs are incredibly high. So the idea that developers can make money off of anything, even with the high demand and high sales value, high rental prices, that, that doesn't appear to be the case. And you add a fourth and a fifth story, it doesn't raise the, you know, the additional square footage costs less per square foot. So there's a real economy in building four and five and maybe even six stories. And why do you care about economy for a developer? Because if it's not worth their while, they're not gonna buy into this. Um, open space. So most towns want developers to pay for open space for public facilities to a point that can be leveraged, but the, the town wants to piggyback off of private developers. Private developers want to piggyback off the town. They have a lot of development options. Um, and they're always looking for a place, surprise, surprise, where they can make money. There are a lot of developers who really want to do work in the public interest, but they have their bottom line. So parking is a big issue. Um, to accommodate cars, there does not appear to be an alternative to ground floor parking under buildings because we've already taken up most of the site other than green space, I mean, in the in the sort of vision, right. there's there's a, there's a fair amount of green space. Uh, I'm actually in a meeting, I'm sorry, work meeting. Um, there's a fair um, there's probably the minimal green space, so there isn't much area for okay, parking. So um, putting it under buildings seems to be about the only way okay. to get more parking to go with uh, more units. We're really being urged to do 1.5 parking spaces per unit. Now, if a developer actually bought into this and looked into the market, he might say, eh, you know, people are actually wanting two. But at two spaces per unit, it's really hard to provide enough parking for the additional units that seem to be needed in order to make this a viable development project. Everybody always says underground parking. In last meeting, we said, how about a parking garage? What we're hearing is too expensive for North Reading. If we had Cambridge property values, Boston property values, you know, that could support underground parking and parking garages. But in this kind of a context, you know, really underneath buildings is the way to go. Podium parking. And this is sort of the new model once you, it's not that new, but once you get outside of Boston, Cambridge, maybe parts of Somerville, podium parking with three, four, five floors above it seems to be the model that's workable. Um, so the, what developers would like to see, this is hardly a final word in the subject because when you talk to a development professional, they're gonna push. They're looking out for their own interests. So it's not as if this isn't negotiable, but this is what we're kind of hearing they would like to see to really um, kind of dig into this further. Uh, the um, town installing the package treatment uh, plant, and then one developer said, no, we, we never develop around package treatment plants we really need to see a real sewer system. We're, we're investing way too much money to do it with a package treatment plant. But some town, and maybe there's a MassWorks grant that'll help pay for this. I mean, we don't know. Everybody wants a MassWorks grant, but several of our clients have gotten them. So, um, so they wanna see progress made as opposed to developer, you need to put in the package treatment plant. Building support among landowners. That's one of the most important things the town can do in the town and we can collaborate. I mean, I mean, we are, you know, ready to work with you on that, but that's the next step. As soon as um, 
develop the first thing developers say, oh, the town owns the land. No, it's owned by a series of different landowners. That's a challenge. And it's a challenge that probably can be met, but need to dig in and make forward movement and rezoning. So what we've shown to date, you know, it's not that far off from what zoning allows. It's small town development. And what we're hearing is that's tough to make the kind of improvements given the current conditions the town would like. Um, other things that we talked about, and Danielle, you were in on at least one of these discussions. Um, so this is not all doom and gloom. I, I mean, we're talking about some of the realities we're hearing. It's just a kind of part of the back and forth in order to advance the town's interest. So everyone would like to see, everyone may need us as planners, you as the town and potential developers, improvements incrementally moving forward. If there are some arrangements for local or regional bus service, you know, bike sharing, don't know whether it makes any sense to do bike sharing now, but the idea that that could be integrated and um, I know there's uh, planning being done right now for, well, this is bullet point number three, three for improvements along uh, Route 28. So bikes, charging stations, walking trails along an improved Martinsbrook Bank. If you could get rid of that chain link fence, if you could do a walking trail, if that started to be a destination instead of a danger zone, which is what the chain link fence is saying, it would start to change people's mindsets in town and perhaps out of towners looking for public spirited development opportunities. The improvements along Route 28 to create a better pedestrian environment that's in progress. And we've been going back and forth with tech, the TEC, the firm that's doing that, providing them some background information. They're working for you, but we're happy to collaborate. And that's a great step forward, not only you know independent of what happens here, but connected to what's happening here. Activities on, on site. And I don't think this is happening, but you know, even a flea market at Ocean State Job Lot, bringing people in and saying, hey, this could be a fun place. Leaves are on the trees. There may be a chain link fence. Wow, this is kind of nice. You know, and changing that mindset would be really helpful in incrementally moving this forward. And all of this is about incremental movements forward. So what we're talking about here is incrementally uh, maybe moving this committee forward in terms of what they perceive as possible, moving landowners forward incrementally, moving the whole town forward incrementally in thinking maybe this is a priority and to put in some maybe low cost, high payoff investments. It's back and forth every and round and round, everybody else waiting for, for, for somebody to make the next move so we can spiral up. So here are our recommended next steps. We've shown three-story buildings. In this kind of vision, increase the heights of buildings from what's currently being shown. So it's more in line. You can say six is never going to happen. Maybe move from three to four. I mean, we can work with you on that in the next slide. We've taken a preliminary step in that direction. Plan on first floor parking for some of the buildings shown. So I know we talked about that. Nobody liked that. We didn't like that. I don't think most people on this committee like that because you want, when you're walking down the pedestrian street, you don't want to see the bumpers of cars and you don't necessarily ha have to with smart planning, maybe we can avoid the worst of that, but need to incrementally raise the number of spaces. Recommendation three, reach out to the landowners. Let's get that process moving and um, let's see if there's interest. I mean, we think there could be and should be, but I think that'll only happen if we take those next steps. Reach out to North Ready stakeholders to build support. And this is very much up to you how much this is a public meeting. Anybody who wants to be on this Zoom can be on this Zoom, but maybe build up more uh, support. So 
we are on the team that's doing the, well, I guess this is a, 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 a fair point, advocate for improvements to the area uh, like um, along Martins Brook, advocate for public building on this site. So we are on the team doing the public facilities master plan that has not even taken the first step. Um, but conceivably there's engagement with them. So they take seriously the notion that the area we're looking at will be a center of town and they should consider getting on that bus and working with us because if there is the sense that there could be moving town hall, a community center, if that were discussed maybe way off in the future, but as a possibility, it would incrementally move things forward. Engage one or more developers who may be interested. And we've seen interest. There are There is development interest that they're saying, you know, happy to Zoom with you for an hour, but I'm not gonna do much more until I see some evidence of the landowner engagement. If you can bring them to the table, we're hearing from a, num a number of developers is, are happy to talk to the land landowners, bring it to the table and let's see what we can work out. Um, hire a development consultant to pursue market studies. So this could be George Cole, who was very generous with his time and there are other people who do this. So instead of bringing a developer who may be looking out for you, but is clearly looking out for their own interest, a development consultant may be more unbiased, but you know, beyond an hour on Zoom, that's probably a consulting gig. Um, in the work we did in, um, in um, Hopkinton, I think it was like a $7,000 um, um, consulting uh, project to really dig into market studies see, and see what was viable in more detail than what we've gotten to date, which is just conversations. So this is a first step in raising building heights. So you can see, this is all what you've seen before. This is what a four-story looks, building looks like. This is what a five-story building looks like. And at least some of these, there's retail on the ground floor, we're suggesting mm, we need to raise at least some of these up another floor in order to get parking underneath. Because I don't think you want this a parking lot uh, behind the community center. Absolutely, you need parking, but not pave every square inch. So we've carved out what we feel like are critical green areas and public areas. There isn't a lot to more to pave over. And then here are the numbers that we had. So this is with the three-story buildings. We have 161 uh, flats. We have 72 townhouses. You multiply this times the 40 to $50,000 per unit, and you get about $10 million, which coincidentally is the assessed value of that land. So that's where we're at right now. Um, and I don't know whether, maybe maybe I should just click on recommendations and then open this up and, and, and get some reaction. Okay, thank you very much, David, that was great. Um... So do we have any uh, any comments or questions? If um, David, if you could um, remove your screen share so that I can see if somebody has their hand up or something. Okay. And then you can bring that back if we have a question on any one of those items. How's that? Okay, uh, Vincenzo, you have a question. Yes, thank you, uh, Chair Pierce. Uh, just a, a couple. So if I understand correctly, and I can just ask them, because there's a couple and then you can answer them. So, so unless it's unless it's four stories plus, it seems that this developer said it just not economically viable. Uh, well, this is this is several developers. This several, is not one you. developer. And, okay. We're hearing the same thing over and over and over okay. again. And then coincidentally, to get it the way we want now, where it looks aesthetically pleasing it's only worth as much as the land. So that doesn't make any sense. I didn't need a calculator to do that one. And also though, it seems like some of the things, um, you know, the screen you had of what would make it work. It's like a developer wish list. It's kind of like when I asked my six year old what he wants for Christmas. It, we have to take this to the town. 
And I can tell you right now, we're having a problem just getting an existing project for a fifth story. So four to six stories here. I think if we can't come in under that, then the rest of the conversation just is just, we can talk about it, but it just, I mean, maybe if we can talk to some more developers, because I'm just being really honest that four to six stories there. So, so if you can comment, if you think it's worth getting a couple more developers to maybe give an opinion, I mean, that's pretty much my primary question, or do you think it's a waste of time? Well, well, no, and we've had very short conversations with two other developers who we want to hear back from. One, I think we're going to hear from later this week, and one we've uh, set up is Zoom for Monday, but we didn't wait for any of that. Monday was a Tuesday, David, because just we're hearing the same thing over and over. And you understand, we're not shills for developers. We're working for you. Um, it, this is so this comes from a number of developers we've talked to um, a development consultant and it's also what we're seeing and many many towns are having these same battles you know no one's saying absolutely we want five stories on top of parking nobody is saying please 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 give us that but it's happening because it, it, it remains empty land it doesn't change. And again, this is, I think it's not our job to advocate for developers. What we're saying is this is what we're hearing. I think absolutely the, the conversation could and should continue. Because um, it's good. It's a really good question. And one last question too, um, for um, do as part of your report, when it came to our recommendation, because we definitely have to go to the stakeholders, was there any kind of economic analysis done of at what price it'd be worth to sell? Some of these businesses there are pretty successful, especially one that you know has a big donut on it. So I, I think you're underestimating what some people may want for their land. And like, yeah. I'm just saying, was that done? Was, was an actual like revenue kind of uh, model used to see what some of these owners might want? Our sense is, I think, and Danielle, you passed on some information that the best way to do this is for not for us to do an independent economic um, evaluation of real businesses. It is to meet up with those owners and saying, you are selling a bazillion donuts. You have, your business seems to be really viable. What would it take for you to work with us to advantage the entire town of North Reading and then carve out a place for yourself. Would you be willing to talk to a developer if he said, you'll get that corner, you'll have that, that donut shop, but it's part of a larger development. So I think that that's the only way to do it is talk to the landowners. I mean, that rule of thumb, that sort of 10 million assessed value, that's a really crude estimate, but it gives a sense of things. And then there are people who may say, you know what, I'm losing money. My great, great grandfather built this business. I will never sell. And that's not something we can get from an economic analysis. And it may be that one or two owners will never sell and then we can you know, work around them. It doesn't need to stop this dead in its track. You need to talk to the big landowners and those most willing to send. And could you work around the existing donut shop Sure. And then just one last question. And thank you, Mr. Pierce. I'm not going to take up any more time. I know it's the CPC meeting. My apologies. Um, on that, on that slide where the developer said that the town has to pay for the wastewater plan. Am I saying that right? Or there be sewer? Did they tell you what the preference is? Sewer. Sewer. sewer absolutely. Yeah. Sewer. Only Bye. one, only one pushed really hard that was wind development. They said we never develop a, a, a around um, um, a, a package plant. Okay. But then again, all of this is subject to negotiation. People change their tune. Mm -hmm. If you can move forward in four areas, maybe they can deal with the fifth area not, not getting exactly what they want. But SOAR, SOAR would make this a lot easier conversation and it would open it up to maybe more developers. 
Yeah, it's certainly not going to it's certainly not going to drive people away if there's real sewer uh, treatment plant in place. And you don't have to set aside, you know, we showed that blue square and said, you know, it's not that such a big deal. It'd be better if that blue square wasn't there if you just hooked it up. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Chair Pierce. Hey, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Vincenzo. Um, any other questions or comments? Yes, Ray. Sure. This is Dave. I just have a uh, question for David. David, what what is the breakdown to of capacity for the three million dollar system that they estimated? I mean, how much of it is for food, for restaurants? How much is it for residential? Is there any kind of almost pie chart about capacity when they're making that assessment of three million in the area needed for it? What we did is we took the MAPC market study, and then we up that like 50% because MAPC was looking at shorter term and it was a couple of years old and it's driving more demand. And they're saying, eh, there aren't gonna be that many restaurants, but we're thinking maybe there could be a bunch more if you wanted town center. So we said, take the MAPC and wind it up 50% and plan around that. Okay, thanks David. So, you know, it covers what we've shown Yes. Maybe not a lot more, but you could expand yeah. it if you needed to. Right. And David, what is that area that you showed there in the parking lot? I mean, you could kind of scale it out with those parking spots, but roughly what in square footage was that area? Oh, I'd have to go back. I could get I could get you that answer, uh, but and I would have to dig pretty I deeply. Get it myself from the slide, you know, just yeah. using the, the yeah. using yeah. an eight and a half foot parking space. And yeah. Yeah. So yeah. whatever it's shown. Okay, Thank Rich, you. Uh, Rich Walder, you had a question? Yeah, a question about the slide of the, uh, you know, the number of units, 161 plus 72, two questions. One is, is that the three floor concept or is that the four floor? That is ex what, we sh what, we, what we've been showing. That's three floors. Um, it's two floors of residential and one floor of retail in some areas three floors of residential and others, and a significant number of townhouses. So it's what we've been showing in the pictures. And, and if it goes to floor, four floors, do you have any estimate of how many units that would be? Um, you know, uh, you know, 300, you know, um, you know, so 230, so, yeah, I mean, if you bumped it up a floor and then there's parking comes with it. Yeah. So if you bump it up a floor with residential, probably something needs to get bumped up with parking. So, you know, you could get to 300 units, you could get to 400 units, you could get to 450. You know, that's the kind of range we're talking about with the heights. You, and, you know, maybe you could get to 500 if all the townhouses became taller buildings. No, let's, no I just want to know one, one extra floor and you're saying around 300 units, basically. Yeah, something like that, something okay. like that. And so, um, and, and so then when you, added, wait a moment. when you added up the 16172 times 50,000, I ended up with 11.6. Um, that's what I ended up with, with the three floor. Yes, yeah. yeah. And these are all crude numbers. I understand. Yeah. Eleven six is the same as ten thousand, more or less. Uh, I mean, ten million. Yeah. 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 And if you do the, if you go with the three hundred units, we're around fifteen million, basically. Yeah. Okay. And the assessed value, we're not sure how meaningful that is. It's yeah. it's certainly worth something, but it doesn't mean what the property is worth in terms of retail sales or, you know, paying off a mortgage or whatever. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, Abby, you have a question. Uh, yes. Hi, David. I'm Abby Hurlbut. I'm chairman of the Facilities Master Plan. Yes. I'm with Bill Ham. And hi, David Pollock, also. Um, I have a question. Could you give me a ballpark percentage of, of the uh, project that would be used for project? I'm having trouble hearing exactly what you said. David Pollack, did you hear? No, you, you wanted a ballpark estimate of, of what are the costs to build all the buildings or but didn't the, get the question? The percentage of, of space for the project taken up by parking. 
of the land area that how much of the land area of the 18 acres is is surface parking in the drawing yeah ballpark you know it's i no i don't have an answer to that i mean we did create a lot of parallel parking so that there are less uh, big open lots. So we've got the two cross streets and there's parallel parking on both sides and street trees. So I think that's a way to, to create urbanism and parking without, you know, that's less suburban mall, large parking lot. But um, yeah, maybe I should change my question to what percentage, roughly what percentage of the developed part of the parcel, not including wetlands, the places people might actually walk around on a regular basis, is grass as opposed to blacktop. Not roads are blacktop, parking spaces are blacktop. You know, you've got a pathway going up through the center, plus you've got that grassy area at the, at the pointy end of things where Winter Street and 28 meet. I'm just curious as to what percentage is functionally open walk around space that's on you know, uh, sidewalks or pay or unpaved we can we can we can't answer that in real time but we can definitely do an analysis and get uh, get it to Danielle for distribution to you and everybody else what we you know what we've done is uh, I think in in many ways maximized the usable open space the green space by creating a focal park in the center of town up on the point by creating the green down the center of the site, which is a, a sort of a linear park. And then by at least conceptually opening up Martins Brook and having access to it from the community building um, at, the, at the south end of the site so that there can be usable open space there. And then developing a, a kind of a, a street section that would have trees and grass strips along with parallel parking instead of just parking lots. It's not the same usable, op that's not usable open space, but, but I think focusing on those three quality uh, usable open spaces of the, the pedestrian mall down the middle of the park up on the, the intersection and whatever kind of you know, passive recreation or whatever the town would wanna do to develop the brook. And we didn't focus on quantity because we kind of focused on the quality, make sure that green space was usable. To answer your parking question, what percentage of parking, I have two, answer, is, I have two answers. One is too much is parking and another is not enough is parking. And that's the squeeze. I, I that's the tough thing. I understand all of that, David, but when you put a uh, large development in the, uh, like that, and the bulk of the open land, for lack of a better term, is basically at the junction of two busy streets, um, which is not really the, the primo part of the package, you know, the junction of Main Street and 62. And the rest of it, other than a median strip going down towards the center, is either buildings, sidewalks, or parking lots, or cross streets. So that that's sort of what um, you know, caused me to ask the question, roughly what percentage of the project is delegated to parking spaces? And, and, and maybe that's not the right question, but it just, it just looked to me as if this was going to be um, a lot of parking, a lot of apartments, a lot of shops, and uh, a lot of traffic. So I was just, you know, I was just curious. And for the developers, their reaction is, wow, that's a lot of green space. You know, we're not gonna pay for all of that green space, we'll chip in, but um, you know, we want the town to contribute and there's not enough parking. Yeah. So I'm more on your side, but that's, that's again, the squeeze, but all of it can be moved around. I mean, this is not like a final plan. Is there too much space out at the intersection and not enough elsewhere? You know, that could be, it's all, that's again, part of the negotiation. David, I one mean, of the really things, good questions. One of the things that we need to keep in mind here also, and it sometimes gets lost in the whole discussion is what happens if we do nothing? Um, what kind of development will happen on, because housing is such in high demand, 
what's going to happen? I mean, perhaps some of these parcels will get turned into housing and they'll come before the for to build four or five story buildings. And then we get them with no control over how they go in. They go in however they could fit on these properties. So, so there's a possibility that we can end up with some of these things that we're talking about. That we say, we kind of say, well, we don't really like that. And then we end up with it anyway in some other lot, in some other way. And we have no, we've had no say and it's no, there's no plan. So we have to keep in mind that there's always that, that possibility. And, and really the issue is solid public benefits. And Abigail, you may not think there's quite enough green space, but that network of green space, we do believe it is a wonderful public asset. And if you have piecemeal development, you'll never get a coherent connection weaving its way through. That's the well, that's problem. Warren, you have asked the right question. You know, if landowners like give up and maybe they do three story development instead of four or five, but you don't get the public open space that weaves the whole thing together. Right. Okay, any other questions for them? Okay, uh, seeing none. Um, do uh, we want to move on from here, Danielle? I think that's a uh, that was great. That that was very good, very good, David. A good uh, explanation of everything where we're at and what our next steps are. So, um, shall we move on from here, Danielle? What's your uh, I guess I didn't know if we wanted to have any further discussion of what we actually do want to take as our next step and when we might want to take it. I don't know if we're ready to, to discuss that yet, but in terms of actual engagement with property owners, um, whether further discussion is needed before that happens. I didn't know if we wanted to talk about that a little bit. Let me just embellish a little bit on, on one point about the property owners that David Eisen made that we heard, it was probably the first thing we heard from every development professional that we talked to, which is that that's the gateway to get the conversation started, is that the town, that somebody's herding the horses. And ideally, uh, you, even with some kind of a flimsy, you know, like a piece of paper that was a, a, a you know, a signed letter of interest, which is means nothing, it's not binding on anybody, but it demonstrates that everybody had been talked to everybody is uh, curious and um, that there's an opportunity for a developer to pitch to the landowners without a big investment. Um, because until they, can, uh, until they can get control of the land, they're not gonna wanna start paying surveyors or you know, geotechnical consultants or anybody to, to, to start to uh, get any kind of traction on what it would cost them to do a real uh, development, which would then underpin whatever kind of offer they'd be willing to make to purchase everything. So I do think it's important if you want to move this forward to go to the landowners and, and have a conversation about it. And so to Daniel's point, um, like when, when do you do that? What do you need to do that? How are you going to do it? It's a, it's a good question for the board. And if you wanted us to take the lead, we would be happy if we would have to talk it through with you, but we could take the lead and all you have to say is, hey, landowners, we've hired these consultants. We'd like you to hear them out and engage in the conversation with them. We can, that's why we put together this presentation. It was for you, but the idea is also conceivably the same presentation for the landowners. So- Okay, I, I agree with that, David. I think that was, I think it was well done. And, and, and I think that it, it's um I think it's real, so uh, you were very good about being real about the costs and the and the and the hurdles, um, and really, I think to, to repeat one of the points that you made, that it's it's more than just um, getting the development this done. It's it's will these landowners be interested in doing something that betters the town? Are they, are they willing to be part of that process? I know some of them are. But perhaps, and, and hopefully, we can find enough of them that are. Uh, but other than that, um, it's going to be a, a situation where we try to put together a project that that is financially viable as well. So, um, so then you you uh, would uh, you would concur that the next step for us then would be to put together some kind of a public meeting for the um, and get as many of the stakeholders there as possible and give them this presentation. 
it's a little difficult with the Zoom, with, with doing it uh, virtually like this, the Zoom situation. Um, it's so much easier if you could set up a room and have them all come. I don't know that we're there yet. Uh, I th and I think that's one of the things that's been holding us up right from the very beginning, is the inability to really bring them into a room and show them on a PowerPoint things and let them point at something and ask a question. Uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's difficult to do. And, and I, I think that's been one of the things that's held us back some is the inability to really communicate with these people the way we need to communicate with them to, uh, to get them to understand or perhaps get involved. I, I don't know what the answer to that is actually. I don't know how we, we can't change this. Um, we can't change this situation. It's gonna change on its own as time goes on, but it's down the road a little bit. So uh, I'm afraid so. Um, Let me throw in another thing we've heard. This is kind of my perception and we've heard this from other people. Thank goodness I don't have to drive in the middle of the night, sit in a drafty room, I'm like in the back of the room. I can't hear what they're saying. I can barely see, you yeah. know, what they're showing. That screen share, I love it. I can pull down, annotate, and I can draw squiggly lines on it. And I love Zoom. So right. no one, no, we, we, we want the same thing you do. We want this pandemic yeah. to be over. I think our, our recommendation is don't wait for that. We can make Zoom work. And I don't think if you have a huge public meeting with 300 people, it's one thing. If this is more limited, and I suppose it has to be a public meeting, but really focus on landowners, right. we can get them all on one screen. We could do yeah, it one no, by I've one. Had a, I've had to run a Zoom meeting with one for 30 people. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm one of the I'm landowners. The difficulty yeah. of doing that. <laughs> um, and if we wanted to do individual landowners and half hour slots, I think yeah. we would rely on you on exactly what the framework is, but we can okay. push the agenda forward. Okay, gentlemen, I'll just there. I'm one of the landowners. Okay, ah. What's your name, please? Okay. Hunter. Okay. And I'm on 71 Winter Street. Okay. And, you know, I've seen stuff about this, but never been reached out to by anyone. Um, I just want to know how much time David has spent in the area. The design team? Looking, yeah, I think he's been looking at this for a while. But I think uh, that one of the reasons, as you can hear, we're trying to put together some kind of a plan so that we can go out and talk to all the stakeholders. But we wanted to get something where we had answers to questions that you're going to ask. So before we just go to have a meeting and everybody asks a question and we say we don't have any answers, we wanted to have some answers so that when we do present it, we, we have answers for some of those questions. So um, uh, I agree. David was, how much time had you spent in the area? And, I, and he's actually worked in this area some, but I'll let David go ahead and answer. I guess I'm not quite clear on the, on the question. You mean on the site? Yes. Yeah. Um, a number of trips out, sort of walking around. Um, I mean, I live in Cambridge, so I'm, I'm there for making special trips. And then, um, Google Earth is not the same as being there, but um, no, you know, just... hours, uh, obviously, uh, you know, hours and hours and hours. Do you, is you, are you asking this question because you feel like it's out of touch with the reality as you see it? Some of it. Some of it, it seems like the plan, like everyone's doing like Linfield Market Street and that they're just doing kind of point blank. I don't think it, really goes with our community. And this is part of the discussion. The reason we are showing this is so people can react to it. And, um, yeah. and as a landowner, your reaction is pretty important. I appreciate that. Um, and also this is the input you would have on how to make it better would be good. If you think you, you could think of something, anything you could add would be would be helpful. There's a lot. I was totally in favor of Heavenly Donuts. They've done a wonderful job. Yep. 
So it's, it's not like I've sat back and just commenting, but there's a lot of stuff in this area that just doesn't quite work for being a town center because of the traffic, because of the width of 62, uh, it's a difficult area. Okay. Yep. Okay, yeah, thank you. And let me just make one, one comment. When we do this kind of work, we really want to understand what's there. But if we dig too deep into what's there, we can't envision alternative possibilities. Throwing out crazy possibilities is crazy, but not thinking about what could change significantly from what the, the way it is now also doesn't help. And it's really a conversation. All of this is a conversation back and forth with a whole bunch of different people, including obviously you, Hunter, you're, you're a critical player in all of this. I'm always for forward change. <laughs> if it benefits everyone. I think that's what we're trying to do. And we're trying to find the best way to do it. So, so thank you very much. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, so again, I guess that means he, he, I think Mr. Hunter there has definitely put forth the fact that we really need to have this conversation with the stakeholders with an explanation. Yep. So, so perhaps that's our next step that we, um, we put something together, invite them, and try and set one up. Abigail is waving her fingers. Yes, Abby. Um, Hunter, um, I have toured the town buildings in the town with both David Pollock and David Eisen, and I think they have spent a certain amount of time before COVID getting to marginally know the community. So while I understand your concerns and I agree with them, um, I think these dudes have a, a fairly reasonable understanding. Uh, really what I wanted to say was as chairman of the facilities master plan, which is looking at a number of town buildings, not the least of which is town hall and the community center. Um, you know, I think that uh, we're sort of working in, in opposite directions. And in fact, David Eisen, as well as David Pollock have both toured the town for the facilities master plan. So I think it would be very good going forward if we could all be in touch with one another on a more reasonable basis because uh, the uh, ideas that uh, Abacus has come up with under the auspices of CPC are somewhat different from what the facilities master plan has been working on. And when we're working with you on the facilities master plan, we will work with you on the facilities master plan. We may mention winter in Maine, but that, you know, we, we, we yeah, don't that, want a conflict of interest between no, no, the two no, projects. No hammer at HKT, HKT yeah. really yeah. driving that bus, okay? And, and you're doing stuff for him. So yeah. that's not really what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm talking about right. two or three different entities in town all sort of working at cross puppies and, and mm -hmm not reasonably communicating um, and spending a lot of time uh, in their own corners. Okay, well then, uh, well, it still seems like our next best step is to have, is to get a meeting of the stakeholders together. I agree. You agree that, David? Yes, yes, Danielle. Because I wanted to say, I don't know what we need to have before we get going. Danielle, Danielle, your audio was all messed up again. Can you hear me? It was okay. Yeah. Before, now it's no good. Uh, I don't know what, what happens. Did, is it just a. Uh... No. Mute, mute yourself, Danielle, and then unmute it. Might help. Better. No. no. You were fine before, so what happened? <laughs> Did you move the computer? L let me ask, to facilitate forward movement, ahead, does it make sense for us, and you only meet every two weeks, does right. it make sense for us to work with Danielle over the next few days or week or two so that we don't 
you, you know, it doesn't run on for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks for the committee to get back together. Right. Yeah, well, I think that's probably that's probably a good idea. I think that, you know, if you want to spend a little time with it, let her, uh, uh, obviously, she's going to have a little trouble communicating this evening. So, um, um, but if you were to, in the next, it, it, I would think sooner rather than, if we're going to do a Zoom meeting, it doesn't matter. We might as well just bite the bullet and get it together and see what we can do. So, um, so let's, um, let's see how many of the stakeholders we can get to come to a Zoom meeting and we'll, We'll run this all up and, and see if we can get some input as well as some uh, some uh, idea of where everybody stands on it. I mean, there's no other way to do it at this point. So, can I try, can I try to say something, something again? Is it, is it working? working? Call it on your Go phone. Go ahead and Danielle. try, Danielle. We can <laughs> sort of hear you. You sound like a robot, but give it a try. <laughs> Yes, uh, Mike, go ahead. Uh, just uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, to Danielle. Danielle, I don't know if you want to assign either Debbie or I as host, sign out and then sign back in. I just yeah. did. Oh. You're the real host. host. <laughs> did you sign out and sign back in as well? Uh, okay, so in the meantime, we'll... we'll um, you know, Dave, I think that's what we'll, uh, we'll, we'll work on that. We'll try to get something together sooner rather than later. And then, and then, uh, because if we get, especially if we get a lot of meaningful input, you know, if we get a lot of meaningful input as far as how, how the, the people feel in what manner they think it would work for them, that would help us with, you know, we could modify our designs and maybe move forward. Go ahead, De go ahead, Danielle. Can I try again? Is there any improvement? Yay. Okay, great. So what I was going to say is before we go ahead with inviting the stakeholders and everything, um, there were a few things I wanted to clarify. It sounds like there are some issues that are still to be discussed. Like for example, the the, the problems that, that Abacus has brought to our attention. The discussion of, are we willing to consider any more floors, any more residential units? Are these deal breakers? Are these things that issues we still wanna press ahead with? Can we, can, we re, can we reach out to the landowners anyway, even if those questions are unanswered? And then finally, I was wondering if we are going to reach out to stakeholders, are those just the owners of the nine or 10 properties in there? Or are we including the direct immediate abutters such as, um, such as Hunter, such as the owners who are immediately around the area that's not actually in the developed area? I kind of wanted to clarify that before we went ahead with the next steps. In, in my estimation, I think we should include everybody because, and, and, and while I know it's important for us to decide, um, the number of stories, I think that the input from them is also going to help us decide the number of stories that would be acceptable there. Because if we look at a situation where, you know, the, the ability to make the thing uh, financially viable um, doesn't work for the neighborhood or for anybody, you're not going to get your vote. So if you're not going to get it, you're not going to do it. So, so like 300 foot of butters, immediate of butters, I mean. Yeah, I think immediate of butters. Immediate of butters. Yeah, immediate about us. We don't want to get too many people, but we want to get enough people. We want to get enough people to get a feeling for it. Right, so, so, uh, and, and then, and it doesn't. It can be just the first of uh, of two or three meetings. This is just the first meeting where we where we gather. Is just like we do in, in any of the other projects that we do. Follow the same thing. We get as much input as we can. We take that input and we turn it into um, a, a modified plan, and then have another meeting and say, okay. Based on what we've heard, this is what we what we're proposing. I mean, I think that's that's the way we've always done our things, and I think that's a, the formula is good. Let's keep doing it. So, Vincenzo, you have a comment. Thank you, um, and Danielle, maybe your input here too. But um, with um, uh, Mr. Eisen brought up a point about to spearhead to get them together, but. Um, I think the town should be the one that does it. Do you feel that the EDC should lead this charge and then come back and make the, you know, the recommendation. Like, I, I feel like in, you know, I know I'm new, but it seems like in times past, it's been the EDC that's, uh, the discussion is first open. Maybe the EDC can get the stakeholders together. 
I think it's better if the town does it. I, I don't think I don't think advocates should take the lead in front of the town. We would be doing it. My suggestion was we could do a bunch of work, but it needs to be under the auspices of the town. I mean, the town needs to be the sponsor. Right. What do you think, Danielle? I think that um, I, I prefer to have advocates giving the presentation, but it should definitely be a town, you know, sponsored, town hosted. Of course. Meeting invited by the town. Um, in terms of the EDC, I don't know how involved the EDC has actually been with this project yet. Oh, and it should think, be involved. Yeah, no, that would be great if they would become involved. I don't think I would want to turn ownership of the project over to the EDC rather than the CPC, though. Yeah. I don't know if that's what you're, maybe I'm misunderstanding. I, I, I'm yeah, sure. the, if, I, if I may, being a member of the EDC or an associate member of the EDC since the beginning, uh, right now is probably not a good time to jump them in. Jumping them in as in, you know, bring them up to date, getting them involved, but not to take the lead on this. Yeah, because their input we go, their support. Really what we need mostly is their support. Definitely. So, uh, so I would look for their support, but I, I, uh, um, I agree with Danielle. We'll, we'll, uh, we would do the invite, we would set up the meeting um, and advocates could do the presentation, basically the one they did tonight. And um, because it covers a lot of the basis, it gives us a lot of, uh, it'll give us a lot of input, I think. And so I think we need to do that. Yes, Mike, unmute yourself. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just um, some information that may or may not be helpful. And I, I, I'm probably not telling at least a few folks who are on this call anything that they, that they don't already know. But um, from my experiences with a couple of projects over the past few years, you know, to the point that you just mentioned and to the point that Abacus just mentioned, I think that it, it's really important that the landowners see that there are town officials who are sort of standing in a leadership role, be it the planning commission itself or the, the, the town planner. Um, I, I think that that really sends an important message to them about this because they know our faces, they, they know our roles. Right. Not, that they don't, not that they won't like Abacus, <laughs> right. but that I think there's a lot that goes with the comfort of seeing the officials there. And I, I found that to be true on a couple of projects going right. back to 2014. So I, I just would, would echo you know, what was stated here in terms of that, that layout. And I know that that's how things have been conducted previously to be candid with you. So I'm not surprised to hear that feedback. And then the second thing that I, I did wanna add is, you know, I, I do think that there is a place where that, you know, I, I would encourage the inclusion of the Economic Development Committee. I don't, I don't necessarily know when that moment is or when that should be. And I'm not sure, I don't know whether they are the group that should or should not be presenting it, but you know, I would strongly encourage that whenever that, you know, time, arises that we, we include them. I mean, I know that they are, are, are they, they've had some success with a couple of events and granted, you know, we've been sort of been on, I don't wanna say hiatus because they have been meeting over the past four months now, but it was difficult for a good chunk of 2020 to do some of the things that I think that they had hoped to do. So right. I would just echo that as well. Um, yeah, well, I agree, and, and I agree. And I agree that I think I stated that we, we, we certainly want their support and need their support because it just needs to, talk, if the whole town is behind it, and to your point, uh, if, the, if the people see all of the town officials, everybody getting behind it, then it does help them to see that, that, that they we're serious about it. So it still goes back to the planning board being the lead, and it goes back to the planning board setting all the meetings up, and then, uh, and then having uh, advocates do, a, do the presentation along with us, you know, so that, so that they see that there is that support all the way along. So... So um, Danielle, if you think that we, I, I, what I would do is put together some kind of a plan with advocates and then perhaps we could do, if not at a regular meeting, a workshop where we would then decide exact, we'll make some of those decisions or at least um, uh, do a, get a basis for some of those decisions. So when we get asked the question, we have the answer. I think that's just important, so. All right. And, and, and one of the things I'm gonna suggest is speaking for myself, we show these pictures, three stories, da, 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 da. It doesn't work. What works? We don't know. It's got to be taller. We don't know how much taller. That might be an okay place to be as opposed to, oh, let's scoot everything up, four stories, right. five stories. Leave it in that in-between zone because we don't know. We, right. And we'll right. resolve it right. moving forward. Okay. Well, you know, you know, and so, so and just a quick comment on this whole thing, too, is that is that, is that we're looking at this, um, 
as we have to with today's existing conditions. And you don't know what's gonna happen in the future. I mean, if housing becomes even more dear, then the value of the housing will go up and that, include, and that will improve the likelihood that some developer would wanna build this if instead of 50,000 per unit, he's looking at 75,000 per unit because the demand is so high. And then suddenly it goes from being break even to a big profitable unit and then, and then things, and then things move along. So you can't really tell because it's been both ways before in the past. Yep. So, um, um, so, so we won't, don't want to discount that. We do we need to, if, and, and again, if we're going to get a public good out of any of this project, we need to plan. And, th and, we, and that's what we're doing right now is trying to put a plan together. And then we'll see how much of this plan we can facilitate based on how many people get involved. So I think that's where we're at. Okay. Okay, uh, any other comments or questions? Um, we'll let them go. Rich, go ahead. Yeah, just um, when you do plan those meetings, I would ask that it be a combined meeting with the select board that we allow it to be a quorum uh, of the select board to attend as well. Thank sure, you. oh, absolutely, absolutely. And as I've said in the past, I'm certainly happy to have both you and Vincenzo in our meetings. It just, it makes the communication so much better. Uh, and having uh, Abby Hobart here tonight also, um, having everybody on the same page is a really important thing. And I think that that moves us forward in a much, much easier, much better way than uh, as having to have a bunch of separate meetings. So, so yeah. again, guys very much for coming. In. Yeah, the combined meeting will allow us to be able to participate in a higher level than we can right now, so. And one more quick point, in every town, somebody needs to own the issue. Right. So. Who's gonna own, we have a lot of people owning it. Sometimes a committee can do it. Often it's one person who says, I will push this forward. So, so that would be helpful, whoever that is. Okay, are you at this, for the moment, or should we, are you done with us and Danielle will talk? Is that how we're? Yes, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. And that way, uh, Danielle and, well, perhaps Danielle and I will talk and we'll develop some kind of a concept of what we wanna do as far as uh, making a couple of preliminary decisions about what, what will what what our answers will be when we get asked the known questions, and then so that when we uh, when we do go to the uh, the stakeholders, we'll we'll um, we'll be better prepared. Okay. 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 Hey, everybody. Everybody. Thank you. Good. Thank, you, Thank you very much. David. Have a good very night. Much. Chris, do you have a did you have a comment? No, no okay. I was just saying good night to him. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Uh, I think we only have, uh, let's see. You have one thing left, don't one. Yes, I know. Um, but my iPad keeps timing out. So. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the Ipswich. Yes, uh, banners, yes. Yes. Yes, that's, this is, a, is this our, their annual request for the banners, Danielle? Yes. Okay. Annually, we give them approval. For those who are not aware, we annually approve the, uh, um, the town or the, uh, um, recreation to put these uh, banners up because we have a banner law and it requires renewal of it. So in order to keep it from becoming a problem, we ask them to reapply every year and we renew it every year. And uh, But they also that, have to comply to the to, to what they're asked to do and they have yep, yep, size yes. and, and content and things of that nature. Yep, so yeah, yeah. In other words, they, they 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 follow the rules along just like everybody else. So that's uh, that's right. That's a good thing. And they've done well every time. So, so um, do we need any discussion on this, or can we go with just a uh, a motion? I'm good with it. Okay, Ryan, you have a, a motion there. Uh, for the yes. Board? Okay. Yes, yes. I move that the community plan commission vote to approve the placement. Of you have to pick your head up a little and talk louder because you faded away. <laughs> Sorry about that. I move that the Community Planning Commission vote to approve the placement of two, you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. 36 inch by 96 inch signs at Ipswich River Park, 15 Central Street, special event banners at the entrance of the Ipswich River Park during the period 5 2021 through 5 21 22. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Let the record show four in favor, no opposed. Okay, so um, I think that takes care of everything. Uh, and 
And um, I, I, I know that uh, Ms. Manipelli is here as well. <coughs> Do you have any uh, any comments or questions for us for tonight? I mean, uh, this you know we like, I like to hear as much as I can. If you have any questions, if we can do something for you. No, thank you. Though I was just listening, and there were a few things that you had on your agenda that are kind of topics that are coming up for us, and I was interested in listening in particular about this Winter Street matter. Sure, thank you. Well, well, as I've told you, our other two, your other two select board members that are here, I. Um, I very much appreciate them attending or you attending as well. Uh, this kind of communication, we haven't, we never really had it in the past. Is this kind of interaction between the two boards? It was difficult. So Zoom has accomplished one thing. <laughs> it's allowed us to, it allowed us to have more of us uh, our interaction between the boards, which I think is just a great thing. So, so we thank you very much. Okay, if there is be nothing else and I uh, suppose we can adjourn. Danielle, oh, I'm sorry, Danielle, did you have any uh, administrator updates? I, didn't I have you. a few updates. I'll keep okay. them short. I almost, um, almost got away with it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> almost. Um, the budget hearings are going to be the select board meetings of March 1st and 15th. I don't know yet which meeting um, we will be attending, but I will let you know as soon as I find out. Um, I do have a general question about um, vehicle charging stations. This hasn't really come up yet, but it's about to come up at um, the stop and shop. Um, <clears throat> the actual stop and shop. Can you hear me? Sorry. Um, whether this could be handled as, um, whether we need to see it at all or whether it could just be handled as a minor modification to a site plan. It looks as though it doesn't really impact more than one parking space, um, as far as I can tell. Um, before it came in, I just wanted to ask you how you like to handle these. Seems small. You know, as, as to whether or not we require site plan for charging stations and that kind of thing. Yeah, or if we could just do minor modifications. Well, first of all, I wouldn't want to discourage charging stations. I mean, mm -hmm. so um, my, my I think a minor is good. The reaction to it would be that we would uh, take a that if they're going to be placed someplace that uh, I would like to see a plan to see where they're going to be, but I would probably uh, minimize the amount of. Uh, uh, permitting required to get them in place. Okay, great. So, um, I wanted to, let's see. Oh, March 2nd is our next meeting and we will have the gentleman from the city of Boston um, attending to talk to us about 5G, right? Yep. So just wanted to make sure everyone thought they could make it. If not, I would probably reschedule him for a different night, but. Um, no, well, I, we're looking forward to hearing from him to learn as much as we can learn about that. Yep. Yes. What, what time is that, Daniel? Um, I think I told him seven. So I think we're actually starting a little bit earlier next time. Yeah, that, that's important to know. So the sooner we know, the better. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. If you if you would just you know send out a little email to us. Sure. I will but do that. yeah, we got we need to learn. We learned the last time, and it really helped us yeah. out. Yeah, it really helped us um, out. Great. So, so um, I noticed we have a mass DOT thing on here. Is that just to let us know that uh, they're just an informational for us? It was, yeah, they're required to notify planning boards. I just wanted to put it in just yep. as okay. correspondence. Um, I don't think our uh, MBTA service is going to get cut at all, so. Yeah, that's, you know. <laughs> they, they, can't um, cut, they can't cut a service they're not giving us. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Go ahead, Danielle. I'm sorry. Um, so housing choice, not the 40A changes that we talked about last time, but the housing choice grant program. Um, I've been told by the Regional Housing Services Office that we're now eligible um, for designation as a housing choice community, and we don't really have to do anything. Um, we got this kind of by virtue of having um, increased our housing stock by 5% over five years. Mm -hmm. um, so we, this is the first year that we qualify and um, we just have to submit an application and basically we're, uh, we're eligible for a lot of new grant money from the state, which is really nice. And um, what do we use the grant money for? Well, um, it is generally, it, it's actually capital projects, which is great. Um, mm -hmm. So, and it would have to be sort of, you know, at least a little bit tied to some housing development, but housing to development could be housing that already exists. So for example, um, you know, I, I think um, it was either Tewksbury or Bill Ricca recently was awarded $250,000 to help with sidewalks um, to existing housing. What are you saying about? Um, so, oh, yeah. 
Bye. Um, so that type of opportunity. So even if we already have existing housing, it's not necessarily just to support new development, but to make better what, what we do have. It can be for other kinds of infrastructure, other kinds is, of- Is there something we could use on the Carpenter Drive project? Possibly. Possibly, yeah. I can find that out. Um, yeah, good. Yeah, so the deadline is March. I'll be working with the building inspector on that. Um, okay, good. Know. That, that's a good That's a good uh, yeah, use of your good. time. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. Okay, anything else? Um, we helped the chamber prepare um, a grant application uh, for the travel and tourism grant that the state is offering. We're not um, a co-applicant, but we gave a letter of support and helped them with the application, us and Reading. Um, right. And if we do end up um, getting grant funds, it would be to help um, set up kind of a, a program to help promote local businesses. And that would include building a database of businesses, um, which would be really helpful. Um, it, this is a competitive grant program. So odds are probably not that we'll be awarded, but even, you know, we, we could be. Um, but even if we're not, I was going to bring up with the EDC at our next meeting that that might be a good use of the funds they sometimes struggle to to spend um that putting to hiring someone to put together a really comprehensive um website that um highlights just all of our businesses and business owners could opt in put in their information what are they doing during covid what are their hours what services do they offer that that could be um, a possible way of using that money if this grant doesn't come that's, through so that's a great idea yeah. yeah, I thought um, yeah. that that might be a nice way uh, to, to use it, but I'll keep well, you posted. We have some, some historic locations that we could also highlight, so. I'm sorry? We have historic locations we could highlight for the tourism part. True. This, um, we, we applied more as the kind of a, the, the project was more around supporting businesses, but actually it would involve things like highlighting um, other destinations, like our open spaces and parks. So if you're in town, you yep. can do you know, you can right. visit certain businesses and then you can see other sites. So yeah, historic, right, right. you know, resources would be great too. Yep. Um, okay. Building inspector wanted me to just uh, be aware that he's receiving a lot of requests lately for second kitchens and that's fine within the same structure, but he's getting a lot of requests for accessory structures having kitchens. And so he's going to be, he and I are kind of pursuing with town council how to, um, ask for deed restrictions to be placed on those properties so that they are not going to become second units um, where the zoning does not allow that. Um, and that's so do you something that at some that? point we're gonna, you know, at some point we're gonna have to deal with this accessory, uh, you know, units. Yeah. Properly. Because of everywhere. Everywhere. We gotta do something about this. They're everywhere. Yep. Everybody's right. built, got them all around me. We're brand new. Out what we're going to do and make and because one of the problems he's having and i know this is true is that we haven't we're not we we haven't been able we haven't really put together a bylaw that gives them some kind of direction to let them know exactly where we're at so so um um it, and, and it's been clear it's clear from all of the research that was done and from our mapc uh, survey that was done that people really would like to see some accessory dwellings. They'd like to see some tech secondary units and they'd like to be able to do that. And yet we've, uh, we haven't really talked about it or really made it, uh, uh something that we worked on. So. Um, it's, it's like the immigration issue down at the border. We, you know, <laughs> both sides can't come together and come up with a policy, but meanwhile, everyone keeps coming over and that's yeah, what you have yeah. in North Korea. Everybody's building ADUs. And they're leaving out an oven so Jerry can give them a CO. So they have everything but an oven. They have the kitchen, everything. Yeah. And he just his his rule is I can't you can't have an oven. So they don't put an oven, but they'll leave a 30 inch space in their cabinet and say bye, Jerry. And then right when he leaves, there's a truck bringing in an oven, probably. But and I don't mean to, you know, I'm just making light of it, but there's no policy. So everyone's just saying, okay, I'm just gonna build one. It's not safe for public safety. The fire departments don't know there's an extra dwelling on properties. Right, it's not fair right. to the neighbors. I could list off all the things I did. What was it, four or five months ago when we brought this up again? I mean, it, I mean, you got to come up with a policy, and it's got to be win-win for everybody. It can't just be, ah, screw the town. I'm just going to build one, because that's what's going on right now. Everyone's yeah. just building them. 
Well, I mean, a lot of those, a lot of those new houses that were built over the, those big houses built over the last few years, it's, it's no accident that they all have two entrances in the front. You know, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's, it couldn't be more blatant about it, uh, and yet, um, and yet, it's not allowed. So, we we've got to either get with the times. We've got to decide what we're going to do. We're either going to uh, figure out some kind of way of allowing them, or or make make a hard and fast rule to give Jerry something to hang his hat on. Well, well, Jerry does have, I mean, there are state, parts of the state building code that dictates what he can and can't do. And I think he's pretty clear. I mean, they're just, unless they were created during a certain time period, and they're just not allowed, unless there's a required separation or the required um, entry and exit within the same house. That's his, I mean, that's the rule. And it's not even really his rule. It's a it's yeah, but I mean, if, the, if if somebody says, okay, we have the required entrance and exit and all that stuff, <clears throat> we still don't allow accessory dwelling units in, in the houses. I mean, but they're there. But if they exist, houses. I mean, if that course, entry are, exists. I mean, there's a combination, but the detached ones are, he's limited. He, as he said, if you talk to him, he's, even though he has police powers, they're not allowed to infer in whatever. So when a person's putting in, a full kitchen, shower, and a bathroom uh, above a garage, and they're building a garage, but they're doing all that. He, he's not allowed to say, stop, you can't do that. He's only allowed to say, you can't finish off that and make it a kitchen by putting in a stove. That's like the little hanger. So everyone's like, oh, okay, I won't put in the stove. And it's kind of just like a big game right now. And yeah. right now it's really favoring the wealthy of the town. That, that's who's building them all. And, uh, and, you know, so it's not even, it's not really equitable even how it's being done. I think, so, I think the vast majority of them are for family too. I mean, and, and which is- Right, I, I agree. That's right. You should get Jerry Noel on one of these meetings. He's seen everything, yeah, you know, yeah. and his inspectors have seen everything, his assistants seen everything. And, you know, the complaint I hear is they don't have any teeth. They can't stop it. And, but everyone keeps building them. Well, if you and can't then stop it, you need to be able to control it. You know what I mean? we're, not I think credit, we're not getting a credit that it's a dwelling. So we're not getting any credit. The town's not benefiting that we're adding more beds, bedrooms. It just seems like it's a complete, like, we're just, it's, we're, everyone's nodding, letting it happen, but the town's got no plan for it, you know? I, I think that was my, that's why I made my comment that we really need to, um, you know, we need to do something about this because it is a, I mean, there are many communities it's allowed. I mean, you know, what you know, we're just uh, right as long as it's regulated and, and people have rules, then it'll come in front of this committee, and this committee yeah. can make a call. And if it's questionable, and you've got neighbors that come on and say, you know, this where he's building this thing, it's really going to be, you know, we'll uh, treat it the way you treat any project that gets brought to the commission, and at least either the ZBA or this commission gets a look at it. And it's fair. Instead, what you got now is somebody just, you know, building a garage and, yep. you know, and putting, yep. up, putting hey, it in. I think Abby wants minute. to say something. See, Abby. Yeah, right one in. minute. Well, uh, you know, Danielle, before I go to Abby, Danielle, do you, um, do, you, do you think we should bring, have Jerry talk to Jerry about how he thinks we should handle this? Do you think he has input on this? Or? Yeah, I definitely think we should have a conversation with Jerry. I mean, he's the one who um, has been really looking into this issue a ton because it keeps coming up for him. Yeah. And he's the one working with town council on deed restrictions for new construction. Um, and, and, you know, but yeah, sure. At some future meeting when we're ready to talk about what we'd like to do to address ADUs, I think okay. that would be great to have him discuss it with us. Okay, Abby, go ahead. Yeah, uh, when... Uh... You know, my three kids all live in the Bay Area, you know, Oakland, Berkeley, San Francisco, and we had considered moving out there. And we, and we certainly looked at properties to buy with one of my kids that might have an auxiliary dwelling unit. And they have a pretty good system out there. Um, among other things, it, ha it can not be more than, I think, 70% the size of the primary dwelling, for example, mm -hmm. secondary dwelling, and, and various things like that. Other issues that don't really exist here, like number of parking spaces, depending on how far from public transportation. We have none, so it's not an issue. Mm -hmm. I do however think, and I feel pretty strongly about this, that this community has uh, been making a lot of noise about supporting services for seniors, of which we have a lot, and this is one way of doing it. 
you know, mm -hmm. if your child has a house in North Reading and wants to convert their garage so that their parents can, can move in, this is how you might do it. And so I think that the town really does need to have a, a policy and a set of regulations that not only allows Jerry to do his job, but also allows people to age in place with their kids or, you know, what, whatever. And, and, and so yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised because of the emphasis on seniors and, and, and stuff for seniors of which there's virtually none in town that mm. we haven't really worked a little harder to get to that point. Well, as you heard from the Dave's comment, we had, this isn't our first run at it. We've been talking about it for a little while now about yeah, how to go about do what to do and how to go about doing it. But we've had other things that have taken our attention away from it. Um, I, and I know that your committee is very busy with a whole lot of stuff, but um, I, I think this is important also and, and particularly with COVID and as we move forward and there's more. Right. So let's uh, let Jenny, Daniel, let's, let's kind of put this on our agenda for sometime in the future. You know, maybe in a month or so, we'll uh, we'll set something up with Jerry, have him attend one of our meetings, and and try to and put together some kind of a, something we can maybe bring to town meeting in October. Sure. Okay. Okay. That will help. I think that's I think that's probably the best way to go about this. So. Okay. Anything else? Nope. I have a question. Go ahead, Chris. Have we heard, uh, have, do we have a schedule yet for uh, um, a new uh, commissioner? We have to well, for appoint our, For one, our right? um, to meet with right. the Board of Selectmen? Yes, for, for the appointment of a, of a planning commissioner. Yes. I haven't heard yet. I don't know okay. if it's been okay. scheduled yet. I'll find out. All right. Okay. Yes, uh, yes. We have to talk to, well, we can talk to, we, yeah, we need to talk to the select board and get a get a, a meeting, get an appointment, get a um, schedule put together. Schedule. Yep. So that we can uh, get the get the uh, vote. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Well, if that's it for tonight, then I thank everybody for coming and for participating tonight. So, uh, and uh, we've got some work before us still. We'll just we'll just keep moving forward. All righty. Uh, so Have this good week night. is adjourned. Thank you. Good night. Oh, well, Debbie has something. Oh, nope. Debbie. Debbie, you're muted. You're muted, Debbie. I'm mute. There you go. Okay. <laughs> um, stop and shop when you were talking about it. Was that 197 or 265? Um, 265. Okay. Uh, we mean with the um the charging station? Yeah. Yes, 265. The, okay. the existing stop okay. and shop. Okay. All right, Thank good night. You. Good, good night. night. Good night. Good night, everybody.